Hey guys, this is Metal Stash here again. This time I am going over how I was able to achieve movement with the units in the map itself. So to start off, <clears throat> the first thing you have to be able to uh, do is using the A-Star Pathfinding Project, you have to be able to produce the nav mesh that the project creates. To do that, <coughs> sorry I got a throat cold right now you create two different layers called obstacles and ground and you set the the uh, certain objects to the certain layers the uh, elevated platform here is actually set in the ground layer so that it allows objects to walk on top of it this block over here is set in the obstacles layer so that units don't try to run through it. So it creates this uh, margin around it. You can actually set that margin to be higher by setting the collision test that it has to be wider. So like if you set it to 2 and then did a rescan, it would make that margin a lot smaller. I want to make it a little larger just so I don't run into any issues with that. Now I'm probably going to test that later of what size is appropriate for my game. Um, <clears throat> to get the unit to interact with the A-Star project, you have to go into the script, or actually first, the unit prefab has to have a seeker script attached to it. I've gone over this before. Um, all I did was attach the seeker script, didn't change anything to it, uh, and that's about it to get it to um, connect to it. Now to communicate with it, you have to, here I just set the seeker variable that um, was in the A star uh, tutorial that they had. So I used a lot of the code that they had and just kind of modified it for my use. Um, now to command the unit, I have my player controller script which is attached to my player here. So that if a unit selected, we've already assumed that the unit is selected and then it checks if the mouse button that is the right mouse button which is under the under one it casts a ray does a physics ray cast and then sends a message command to every selected unit it gives the uh, hit location that it occurred at and then the unit does uh, testing for what type of unit that is or what it hit, like if it hit ground, if it hit uh, another unit, it needs to test if it's on the same team, if it's on the enemy team. But for right now, if it hits ground, I just move it to that point. And to do that, I have another function called move that takes a point vector. And then this is where seeker comes into play, where you call the fu the function start path, and you give it the um current position and the position that you want to move to and then a callback function to uh, for when the uh, path is ended and you've reached the end and the unit has stopped. You don't actually have to have that but it kinda lets you know if uh, when the unit gets done with its path traveling you can do stuff at the end now to get it to actually move, because right now the unit doesn't actually move. It doesn't have anything to tell it to move from point A to point B. You've just now calculated a path between the two. So to do this, I have uh, made it so it rotates towards the uh, current waypoint and uh, also it gets the direction to that waypoint 
And then the reason I attached a character controller to the unit, instead of using, like, say, a, uh, just the normal collider, uh, the character controller on that, you can use the simple function, dang it, simple function uh, dot move. This is very easy to use to uh, move units around. So then it moves towards the waypoint. And if it's distance between uh, the two vectors is ever um, less than the uh, next waypoint distance, then it adds one to the current waypoint and returns so that you have now reach that waypoint and you're going on to the next one. So to see this in action, I'm going to play this here for you guys. Now I don't have actual uh, unit collision yet, so you see how the mo unit moves around and uh, you can see it'll, well, it collides with the object there, but that's because I haven't had unit collision testing yet. But it moves around the obstacle just as it should around that nav mesh that I created. Um, it'll go up there, but there's a reason that it doesn't go there because the slope height is a little higher than the uh, allowed character controller lets it go up. So I'll have to fix that later. But that's about it, guys, for the basic movement of uh, my units in my game. I'm going to try to go over next is how I went about selecting multiple units. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, uh, and I'll see you next time.